I was sitting in my office the other day after a particularly difficult week, and I felt a presence in the room with me. She didn't speak, but I knew who she was by name. It was peace. She'd come to be with me in that quiet moment. I said, where'd you come from? She just smiled. It was one of those grins that gives you the feeling that someone is about to let you in on a really good secret. I've been reading the words of the Chinese philosopher Lao Tse. If there's to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nations. And if there's to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the cities. And if there's to be peace in the cities, then there must be peace in the home. And if there's to be peace in the home, there must be peace in the heart. It, now, it doesn't say anything about peace being in my office. <laughs> but there she was, and there I was, and there was no denying it. It had been a while since I'd felt her presence. I spent this week on jury duty here in district court. It's not how I wanted to spend my week. I had a lot of other things I wanted to be doing. I spent three days in a jury hearing a rape and domestic violence case. Three days of hearing testimony and evidence that broke my heart. Nobody should be terrorized and threatened and abused, and especially not in their own home. There was no peace in the home of these people, and there certainly was no peace in their hearts. And I realized that this was only a small window into one home and into a problem that plagues so many others. Peace was not my companion for those days inside or outside the courtroom. But I thought to myself, I'm gonna, if I'm going to spend a week of my life in the courthouse, I want to at least be on a jury and see how this process works. But this case haunted me. Its characters and its consequences were my daily companions, and they even preoccupied me when I awoke in the middle of the night. On the third and final day of the trial, I knew that we jurors would be asked to make a decision that would profoundly affect the lives of the people involved and their children. When it was over, I, I learned that I was an alternate. That meant that while the other jurors went to deliberate and decide, I was invited to leave and go back outside the court and back to my life. Now, all week, I wanted to be freed from this burden and duty, but now I was invested. Now, the judge told me that I was no longer needed, and after three days and all of that, I did not get a voice in what would happen. I would have liked to, had a, to have had a say, and I wanted to hear what the other jurors were thinking because we weren't allowed to talk about the case at all until it was over. I wanted to at least be able to say goodbye to these people with whom I'd spent the, these past three very intense days, but I didn't even have a chance to shake a hand or exchange a business card. They went their way and closed the door and I was instructed to go mine. I was very unsettled by all of this, as you can imagine. So it was odd for Peace to present herself like she did that afternoon. You can't always get what you want, she said, continuing to smile. I know that. I said I learned it when I was eight years old. My mother told me that I could be anything I wanted to be when I grow up. Anything, I asked? Yes, honey, anything. Then I said, I'm going to be a horse. <laughs> That's when I learned the limits of doing anything I wanted. 
And as I grew up, it was reconfirmed that you might be able to get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant, but in real life, you don't always get what you want. And Peace looked at me and said, that's why I'm here. What do you mean, I inquired. She explained that peace comes from realizing the difference between getting what you want and getting what you need. Say more about that, would you, I asked. Because not getting what I want does not usually leave me feeling peaceful. It seems like getting what we want is what makes us happy. Oh, reverend, she said with some condescension. (laughs) Happiness is a fleeting emotion. Getting what you want might make you feel happy briefly, but it won't last. Tis the season of peace and joy, remember? Joy and peace are not fleeting emotions. These are spiritual foundations. They're soul companions who remain your friend always once you learn how to be with them. Do you mind if I take notes, I asked, knowing that I'd be able to use this material for a Sunday sermon. Go right ahead. Here, here's something you can write down. Peace comes from finding your path, not from directing it. Too many people are busy trying to get what they want that they fail to discover who they are first. Then what happens is that what, when they get what they want, they discover that they're still not satisfied because they're chasing the wrong dream. People can be like dogs that chase cars all their life. When they finally catch what they've been chasing for so long, they realize that it's not as wonderful as they thought it was going to be. What they wanted is not what will bring them true peace and joy. Well, how do we know if we're chasing the right dream, I asked. You have to listen to discover your fate. Too many people are trying to create their fate rather than discovering it. Ah, wait a minute. Time out, I said. Fate? We modern people don't all believe in fate. That's because you don't understand it. Okay, then. I have my notepad. What do you mean by fate? Think of it this way, she says. The reason that certain people don't like the word fate is that they think that it means that you do not have control over your own destiny. That's right, I say. But that's not what I mean. Your fate has to do with your life's calling. Every person has unique talents and personal gifts that they're called to use for the common good. And each person has the freedom to discover their gifts and to live their calling, or to deny and disregard their calling, or to use their gifts for purely selfish aims. But what people do not get is a chance to vote on what their gifts are or what they're called to do. People get a chance to discover and develop their gifts, but they don't get to choose them. Despite your mother's well-meaning encouragement, you cannot be anything you want to be. That is, if you want to know peace, and joy 